Joining me now is Marie Wilson, who served for six years as a commissioner for the National Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Thanks for joining us, Marie. Glad to be here. Now, the site near Kamloops is just one site out of more than 130 residential schools across Canada. You know, more than 150,000 children placed in these institutions since the late 1800s. So these findings could be just the tip of the iceberg. How many more can the country expect to find? Well, I think perhaps first to remind ourselves of how many children we already know died in residential schools. And as was included in our report, we had confirmed 3,200 children who did not return from the schools and another thousand approximately who died within a year of leaving the school, many of them sent home sick. And so we already knew for sure uh, of uh, about 4,200 children. Um, this is about um, children who have been identified as uh, buried in places that we have not yet had recorded or reported or reflected in the records that were made available to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission while we were standing or subsequently to the National Centre for Truth and Reconciliation. So how many more can we expect? Who knows? Uh, we do know that everywhere in the country that we held hearings, we heard of instances where children talked about classmates who had disappeared or um, incidents of extreme violence that they had witnessed uh, where a child would be taken out uh, physically harmed and never seen again. Uh, we did hear of some cases of suicide among children. We did hear as well of um, children who talked about um, not only that there were burials on the school sites and cemeteries beside some of the schools, but some of them as children being called upon to help dig graves and to help bury what had been former classmates. So how many, we don't know for sure. And this is why paying attention to this and this a recent, I'll call it a reawakening because anyone who has been paying attention to this over the past decade knows that this is not new information, this particular finding. But in any case, we should assume that there are other children to be found, uh, probably in almost every jurisdiction of the country where there were schools. And 130 schools is where the schools were, but burial sites uh, may be in other locations, and we need to be aware of that as well. Well, you talked about the stories of people who attended these residential schools or their ancestors who attended, and, and they knew that, you know, people went missing, their friends went missing. And when this happened, when, we, when this was discovered, we heard that. It, it wasn't a surprise for a lot of people in the Indigenous community, but then it was a shock and surprise for a lot of other people across North America. So why is there such a lack of information out there for everyone? I think the issue is not, is there a lack of information? I think the issue is, is there a lack of paying attention? And is there a lack of proper uh, care and concern and regard? Because the oral history that we accumulated, 7,000 uh, statements, an unprecedented canvas of opinion um, and of factual information, uh, bigger than any other in the history of the country uh, of Indigenous peoples. And um, somehow we manage not to pay enough attention to all of that information. And why have we not taken as truth what survivors have told us to be their truths? It's as if we have to actually see the little bodies for ourselves before we can possibly believe that it is truthful. And I think that is a huge introspective question for us to ask ourselves as a society. Absolutely. Now, there are also many questions and, and calls, rather, for the sites of other residential schools to be examined. The federal and provincial governments are vowing to do something. Do you think the efforts are sincere? I think they're sincere, but I think they're slow. And when we three commissioners, myself and my two colleagues, issued a joint statement on December 15th of last year, the, the thing that we stressed above all else was the urgency, the urgency of the calls to action that we articulated. The urgency, why? One, because um, just in terms of the, the presence of our living experts who are the residential school survivors, they are now increasingly elderly and we are losing them every week. Uh, there's not a one of us who has not lost survivor friends um, in the past week or, or days or month. 
Um, so we're losing that expertise. That's the one thing. But the more important thing, the moral question, the ethical question for our country is how seriously um, and how much to heart do we take this? Marie Wilson, thank you so much for your time today and, and for being on the show, sharing your expertise. Thank you very much.